let us not talk about what are the clinical manifestations that will develop in the disease and you can remember them by the mnemonic 4 A's. In 4 A's, the first A component is amnesia, that is forgetfulness. Now, how would the patient present? You see, he would be having loss of episodic memory. Now, episodic memory is like, uh, you know, how far the grocery store is away from your house. So, you know the way to the grocery store and back. This guy has been living in this colony for 70 years. He goes to a particular grocery shop for last, as let me say 60, since age of 10 years, his mom, when this old man was himself a child, his mom started uh, sending him to get, you know, little bit of items like, let me say, tea or coffee or sugar or eggs or bre bread for breakfast. So for 60 years, he has been going to the same shop and now this old man will go to that shop and forget why did he come even if he buys products from there he may not even know the way back to his house he has lived at that colony he has lived at that street for so long and now this old man does not even know the way back to his house so episodic memory basically means that this old man will develop inability to do basic things that we don't even think about like for example track finances Normally, you would have seen old people are very particular about money aspects. You know, if an old man will go out with 500 rupees in his pocket, he will know that, okay, I'm carrying 500 rupees. If I ask you how much money are you carrying in your pocket, you would just, you know, take out, put hand in the pocket, take out some money and put it on the table. You don't even know what you are carrying because we as young people or rather you as young people will not even bother about it. But old people are very particular and very meticulous because they have so many years of experience with them. So they would be knowing how much money are they carrying, how much did they pay the vegetable vendor, how much money did I pay at the milk booth, how much money did I pay to X, Y, Z, Dhobi, etc., whatever, right, For, or made per se. This guy will lose ability to track finances. Why I'm emphasizing that is because people with Alzheimer's disease, if you handle hand them over their internet banking password and uh, the user id and they start making transactions by themselves they might actually make wrong transactions they might actually transfer their whole wealth to somebody in fact there have been instances when people with early onset alzheimer's disease have lost their entire wealth to some kind of a scammer who just called them up talked to them and asked them to transfer the money and he, he the, the person would gradually transfer the money because he's not realizing that uh, uh, you know numbers is something which is going to be mind-boggling for these people so the message is that inability to track finances, inability to drive and driving say, I don't mean the fact that he can't press on the accelerator of the car and put on the brakes, he might drive safely, but he might not be able to get back to his house. So he might get lost. So all the routine things about which we don't think about, like how much money are we carrying in a pocket? How much did I pay somebody? How much is left behind in my pocket? Episodic memory facts would be lost. Subsequently, there would be loss of short term memory. Short term memory would be like he put his cell phone in his left breast pocket. Now he's hunting for the mobile phone in the whole of the house. His daughter is laughing. Dad, mobile phone is in your left breast pocket and you are hunting for mobile phone. Initially, it's a laughing matter for everybody. It is only later that they realize that the same person got lost and he cannot even remember his name. He cannot remember his address. He cannot even remember his cell phone number. So you have episodic memory loss, you have short term memory loss and then you have is a long term memory loss. Mostly non-medical people, his son and daughter will realize that there's something seriously wrong with this old man when he went off his house for let me say getting grocery items and he did not come back. So maybe the, uh, the grocery uh, shop owner took mercy on this guy. He said, okay, this old man is sitting outside my shop for four hours. And uh, you see, normally these grocery people, they usually know which person stays in which house. So he said, sir, can I just escort you? So this guy will smile back at him. This old man will smile back at the grocery owner. So the grocery owner will not realize that there's something wrong with this guy because social graces are initially maintained. Like if I'm talking to you in a nice fashion, you'll obviously smile back at me. I mean, a harmless smile really does not uh, cause any harm to anybody. This guy, social graces will be maintained, but the unfortunate thing is that it's not going to register in the brain that this guy, the shopkeeper is offering him to take him to his house. He might have to hold him by his hand, escort him to his house saying that he's sitting outside my shop for five hours and when his son, daughter or wife is asking, what really happened? We were so concerned about you. He's not answering. This person is having aphasia because of damage to the dominant parietal lobe. 
प्लीज रिमेंबर अल्जाइमर्स डिजीज पेशेंट्स डू नॉट हैव ए कैलकुलिया दे हैव डिस कैलकुलिया दे मेक रॉन्ग कैलकुलेशन इफ यू से ट्रांसफर वन थाउजेंड रुपीज टू मी वाया ऑनलाइन बैंकिंग और वाया पेटीएम ही माई ट्रांसफर टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज दैट इज डिस कैलकुलिया नॉट ए कैलकुलिया ए कैलकुलिया इज अ फीचर ऑफ स्ट्रोक डिस कैलकुलिया कैन बी फाउंड इन पेशेंट्स ऑफ अल्जाइमर्स डिजीज एंड वेल बी डॉक्टर्स आर ऑल्सो बैड एंड मैथमेटिक्स नो that is why we took a biology and became doctor so that does not mean that we have alzheimer disease i basically want to sensitize you to the fact that in some books some guides some apps it is mentioned a calculia is one of the features of alzheimer no it is dyscalculia it's not a diagnostic feature i mean i am bad at mathematics right i took a biology because of that that does not mean that i have one of the diagnostic features of alzheimer it is amnesia then is aphasia due to damage to the dominant parietal lobe then you can be doing a clock face test in this patient like for example you can draw a clock you can mention hours like 12 3 o'clock 6 o'clock 9 o'clock and you know you can draw in between like this and uh, then you can draw the needles also one big one relatively small one and you can say sir can you draw for me when you do this clock face test you will notice the fact that there is a distinct possibility that this person with alzheimer's disease might put all the numbers like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 12 on one side only i'm not teaching you hemi neglect he might just draw one needle only half the clock timing orientation has been made what i'm teaching you at this moment is loss of visuo spatial skills in a person like if i draw a geometrical shape before you i say can you please draw a triangle like i am not saying only drawing a triangle i am drawing it before you say doctor okay copy these geometrical shapes before me you easily can draw these geometrical shapes because your parietal lobe is working just fine you have visuo spatial skills but in this guy the non dominant uh, parietal lobe is affected so visuo spatial skills would be lost the test that i did before you guys is uh, technically called as clock face test actually there has been a question in the exam where they have given a clock face test like this and they have asked what does it signify it signifies that there is a loss of visuo spatial skills in an individual which basically means apraxia the fourth feature of the disease which is the highlight and i'm using a different ink to highlight it is called as anosognosia well the meaning of this term is that this person has passed urine in his pajamas stool in his pajamas he is smelling of feces but he does not mind the bad smell forget about trying to change his clothes and washing himself clean he will sit as if nothing has happened his son and daughter are frustrated that my dad has become so unhygienic he is urinating on the floor in the house he is not even making attempt to clean it forget about cleaning the floor he is not even trying to clean himself in fact guys in alzheimer's disease the situation is so bad that if you place a plate of food in front of this guy he does not even know that how to eat the food even if you have mercy on this guy like in your ward there was a alzheimer's disease admitted patient with pneumonia for example and the hospital staff just put food in front of him and went away and he is not eating so you thought okay let me just feed the old guy so you took a spoon you know picked up some rice put it in the mouth of this guy you are putting food in the mouth of this guy he does not even know that he has to chew and when you put food in the mouth obviously there would be some salivation so there would be saliva coming from the mouth there would be food dripping from the corner of the mouth and then you will notice that there is a wet patch appearing on the pants of this guy you are feeding him and he is urinating in his pants so you can understand the frustration from a non medical perspective because us doctors can understand he needs a diaper he might require a tube feeding he might require a feeding gastrostomy or maybe a feeding jejunostomy because nutrition part is obviously to be taken care of these patients you see in america there are nursing homes where these old people are kept and you would have read anyway lot of these old people with alzheimer's disease in america they actually died because the caretakers of these people they suffered from covid 19 they were young people and they transferred it to this old man who could not feed by himself and the alzheimer disease patient died then subsequently the four a's of the disease are amnesia aphasia aphasia is a feature of dominant parietal lobe apraxia non dominant parietal lobe identified by clock face test and also agnosia which basically means that there is lack of awareness with respect to hygiene issues in these patients though i there is lack of awareness to almost everything it's not that he is in altered sensorium sensorium is fine but there is lack of awareness especially of the hygiene issues in these patients so it's a very difficult thing for non medico people to understand that why is his or her dad become relatively so unhygienic 
The next features might actually surprise you but you need to remember that in the later stages of this patient there might even be development of rigidity not the classical rigidity that you encounter in Parkinson disease the cog wheel type or the lead wheel type but at the same time I mean yes rigidity will be written in the literature uh, later stages the person might actually be totally mum he will be obviously incontinent so there's a possibility that he may not write the word anosognosia he might write incontinent patient and then the person will become totally bedridden once the patient is incapacitated then so many more other problems will come you see if somebody keeps on lying in the bed for most part of the day there is risk of deep vein thrombosis there is risk of pulmonary embolism risk of uti in this guy and god forbid if it develops a bed sore and he's urinating over that bed sore itself no? he will urinate in the bed so the urine will soil the bed sheet and the bed sore also and that is when sepsis will come in and the person can die so incapacitated bedridden state is uh, usually found in the later stages of the illness so i would say that uh, most neurological illnesses end up in a sad way 